you know, when you reach a certain point of success, you know, you need to almost change. And people yeah. say, people will get mad and you say, oh, you changed, you changed. Right. But you change for the better because your 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 energy's higher. You're at a higher frequency, so you're gonna attract higher things. And he just never he just never changed. He hung around with the same people. He was so loyal. He went to the same places. And I think a lot of that was you know, you know, sometimes in boxing we always say sometimes your your best friends could be your worst enemy. What's up, everybody? Got a special episode of the Blue Collar Boardroom in a different kind of boardroom today, man, with Billy Lyle. This is uh, my boxing coach, and uh, man, he's got an incredible story that I want to share with y'all. Hey, thanks for having us, bud. Hey, thanks for coming down. I always love having you down here. Yeah, man, I uh, started boxing. How long ago was it when I first started coming here? Oh, gosh, probably three or four months ago. It's only three or four months, and it's been a like life-changing and transformational experience. And I guess I was... Uh, thought boxing gyms were, I was intimidated to come in here, didn't want to get my ass beat, didn't want to get hit, I didn't really know, like, didn't want to look stupid. Um, I actually did karate when I was a kid, and then people used to make fun of me, you know, for doing that stupid shit, you know, <laughs> you know, karate kids. What happens when a karate kid gets in the match with a boxing kid? Uh, well, normally they don't, they don't do, you know, they don't do so well. <laughs> <laughs> you grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, did y'all do karate around there? There was no karate in Youngstown, <laughs> no, it was all boxing. Okay, so uh, we, we live in a generation of snowflakes, and that's part of the problem is, is that the young kids, uh, they don't want to do the work uh, to, to be happy, you know, and I don't know um, if, you know, this generation of people, I see this meme about Mike Tyson, he's like, people forgot what it's like to get punched in the mouth, that's why they talk so much shit on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so really, I just came into boxing to uh, to find confidence because there's a lot of people, a lot of haters out there that want to beat yeah. me up. Yeah, no, of course, and I, I can't agree more, you know. They got a good business model, the karate. Uh, you know, you get a belt, you spend money, the more time you're there. But um, at the end of the day, when you get in the ring, you find out the truth in the ring. So it doesn't matter what color your belt is or how long you've been doing karate, how many pieces of wood you could hit. You know, when you get in the ring, you're going to have to boogie and you're going to have to fight. Uh, and the other guy or guy doesn't care anything about that stuff. Well, growing up, how did you get into boxing? What was it like growing up in Youngstown? Because you grew up with uh, world champion boxer Kelly Pavlik. Y'all are both from the same town. Yeah. What was? How, how come both of y'all ended up being so successful in boxing? You know, I, I think probably one of the most truthful answers is in Youngstown, there's not a whole lot to do besides, you know, either sports or get in trouble. You know, we didn't have, there was no lake around to go uh, take the boat out to. There was no skiing, there was no resorts. Uh, it's dark, it's gray, you know, there's not, there's no ocean, no mountains. So you, you channel your energy in a certain direction, um, and if it's a positive direction, it's gonna pay, you know, exponentially. And if it's a negative direction, then, you know, you're gonna go down the tube fast too. Um, so we were just able, I was lucky enough to find the sport of boxing at a young age and put that extra, energy that, uh, you know, the chip on your shoulder, the things every kid has growing up, no matter where they're from, you know, the feeling of inadequacy or the, you know, maybe the lack of confidence and able to channel that in a direction where I was able to be successful. Um, and when you say successful, I mean, in boxing, you said something to me, I'm going to bring it up, but it's just kind of a champion mentality. Um, you know, being paid lots of money to fight, uh, beating tons of people, uh, you, you, you know, you, you've been up against the very best. Uh, what, would you th what would you say what your biggest championship moment in boxing was? Um, boy, you know, I fought John Duddy in 2009. He was ranked number two in the world. Um, and he was, you know, really on the boxing radar right there. And I was a big underdog. I went into his hometown uh, in Newark, New Jersey, uh, and, and I beat him a decision. That was, you know, a great night for me because I believed in myself. I, I kept hearing about him and hearing he's number two in the world. It's John Duddy. He's this, he's that. He's undefeated. He's 27-0. and. And I said I could beat this guy, and I, I I believed I would beat him, and you know I went in there, and uh, you know I won the decision, and it was it was a life changing moment. Um, so that led you to an opportunity. Now you've got this big poster in here of Chavez. Now many of the people watching this may not know who Chavez was. So so you, that you fought for a championship. Belt. Yeah, I fought. I actually fought for the IBF World Championship in Germany, um, and then a year later I fought for the WBC uh, Silver Championship down in Mexico. So I got to travel around, and you know. I was a kid, I'd never been to Florida in my life till I fought there. Uh -huh. and my dad's first time in Florida was coming down here to visit me. So I probably still wouldn't be on an airplane if it wasn't for the sport of boxing. So this is where your story kind of gets real interesting to me because, you know, 
I can remember early when I start, far, first started coming in here, you said something to me like, I didn't ever make it in boxing. And it was, I, I guess, because what, you weren't ever the heavyweight or you weren't ever the champion? The world champion. The world no. champion. Yeah. And so it was like Super Bowl or nothing. Like, like <laughs> that's, you know, is that like a football player who doesn't win the Super Bowl ring? Or, gosh, I, I mean, Dan Marino's a nobody because he, did, <laughs> yeah, he didn't win a Super Bowl? Well, it was part, you know. I guess Dan Marino didn't win anything in sports either. Yeah. No, no he, he, had a great, he had a great career. But um, it, it was obviously the world championship is that's the bar you set as a boxer where you're a world champion, you know, uh -huh. and I didn't quite reach that bar. And then the other bar you would set, you know, financially is you say, okay, I made so much money, I'm set for life, I don't have to do anything. All right. You know, and that was a bar where I made good money, had a great career, but I wasn't saying, okay, I'm gonna go fishing, you know, every day when I was done, or I didn't have that choice, which was good in the long run. And you're, and now I'm doing what I do, and I'm here and doing something I love. Your friend Kelly, like, he beat Jermaine Taylor. I can remember playing fight night, he was, you know, uh, an you know, awesome athlete, no, specimen, right. specimen yeah. of a boxer. Only guy he lost to was Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins. Then well, later in his career, he lost to Sergio Martinez. Wow. But when he was young, I mean, he was just just knocking everyone down. I mean, I think he was at one point 32 and 0 with 30 knockouts. So he was like. So they they had him uh, even uh, you know as a great white hope and yeah. they were going to beat Mike Tyson and you know, what happened to him? Uh Partying? Be real, because I got a bunch of partiers that watch me. Yeah, well, you know, I think Kel would tell you, you know, I'm sure, you know, we maybe had a couple too many good times. And Chasing women and having fun <laughs> will take you down. Yeah, that's for sure. The thing about Kel is it, it would be so funny because he, he was never the type to go chase women. And we'd, yeah. we would drink and we would, he would want to go out in these little back alleys in Youngstown with a bunch of guys that, you know, were laid off for 30 years from the mill and sit and bullshit with them. But I, I feel like he just, you know, when you reach a certain point of success, you know, you need to almost change, and people yeah. say, people will get mad at you and say, "Oh, you changed, you changed." Right. But you change for the better because your 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 energy's higher. You're at a higher frequency, so you're going to attract higher things. And he just never he just never changed. He hung around with the same people. He was so loyal. He went to the same places, and I think a lot of that was you know, you know, sometimes in boxing we always say sometimes your your best friends can be your worst enemies. Yeah. I, I probably wasn't always the best friend. Hey, Cal, let's go have a beer. You know. So, uh, but you know, he was the world champion. He did make it. You know, when yeah. you make. 15, 18 million dollars, and you win three-time world champion. You made it. You made it. You yeah. might not be, you know, the thing is, the potential was there to be maybe one of the all-time greats to be sitting here talking about Hagler, Hearns, Pavlik, Roy Robinson. So that that was there, and I think, you know, I'm sure when he goes to bed, he might think about that. But at the end of the day, you know, he's successful. Absolutely, and so this brings us to our story where finding our purpose and you know you were telling me you know uh, that you were a teacher and that you had your savings and your family and you found a family and once you found a family you decided that you weren't going to stop taking the risk of getting hit in the head early in your career because there was still an opportunity for you to get paid to fight hundreds of thousands of dollars of money you could have made left to just continue to why'd you quit what happened you know the it, the, it was just something the, the passion was gone for it Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always believed, you know, don't get greedy. Mm -hmm. uh, when the passion's gone, I think I, I fought my whole life. I fought some of the best guys in the world. And I, and I was 25 and 11, so I, I definitely took some losses. But my losses were I fought four world champions. So I fought the best guys, uh, and I took a lot of shots. And even when I won, I wasn't a big knockout puncher. Sure, I would have to go the distance to win. So I had a lot of rounds under my belt. So I always thought in life, you know, I've been successful. God's took care of me. I was good to the sport of boxing. The sport of boxing has been good to me. But now I'm not hungry, I'm not passionate anymore. If I go in the ring only to get a paycheck just for the money, that's when bad things start happening. Right. I always believe, you know, you get greedy, bad things start happening. I remember one day I was doing construction with my buddies and we were getting all the scrap, all the metal down. And, uh, you know, we, I was just wanted to fill it up, fill it up, take to the scrap yard and get paid. And he said, don't get too greedy, we'll break the hitch. And then, and then, you know, the whole thing will break. So at a certain point I just realized, okay, it's not in my heart, I'm done. Well, that's an important point because a lot of contractors, you know, I'm trying to let them know that for me, this has been a real positive outlet. Like you talked about having to make a change and, and boxing was a part of that change for me because I've been successful, but going to that next step, I, you know, I want to be Floyd Mayweather of roofing. Yeah. I don't want, undisputed is, is, and taking it to the next level, you know, being around somebody like you, it's just what it takes to win at the highest level is, is there's not that much difference between people that are really good and the greatest. There's a great book, I think it's called The Razor's Edge. Uh -huh. it, just, it just says, I mean, it's the same thing with any sport you do. If you just start the sport, I can get a lot of guys to 90%. I can get a lot of guys to win fights, you know. But when you get to that world-class stage, that's where it's the razor's edge. And it just, it could be, it could be the things you did 
to have got you there, it could be the things you didn't do. Right. You know, the, 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 you know, when you reach that level, like, like we talk about, there is no choice. Uh -huh. Like you can't go out and drink. You can't right. go eat two hamburgers. And, and I, I really feel like that translates from boxing, but also to the business world too, because you realize everything matters. Every thought you think matters. Every decision you make matters. Every conversation matters. Every word matters. We're constantly in interaction with the quantum field. So everything, like right now, if we started talking about cheeseburgers, the, the conversation goes about cheeseburgers. So if, if you put your energy in a positive direction, you're going to draw other energy from that direction. Well, one of the reasons why I came here was I was preparing for a big event and a big speaking opportunity. And we went into the event and just absolutely destroyed it. And I believe that the energy that, and the stamina and the confidence that you know was prepared, not just in the workouts before and after during the 75 hard, but stuff I did here was a part of it. But there was one moment before that where I was two weeks away from family. I was with uh, Alex here who's videotaping it and basically we lost like two or three commercial projects we were you know because a lot of times I run the business everybody else does all the sales work you don't always take the shots and whenever you think you're gonna land a big project and you don't or you go into a championship fight and you don't win dude, there's a big letdown there's like trauma emotional trauma involved in I would it. say the only way I can compare it to it I, I know you know people might not like the analogy but to me I always felt like somebody died I know it That's is the like only that way I could put it, somebody know, died I mean, in that movie yeah. I mean it's just like your heart is just you know it, yeah it's, and it's, it's you know it's, well somebody did die the person that you had envisioned for your future self after you had beat Chavez or after that person this dream that you put your heart and soul in it doesn't become a reality but um, the real deal is you didn't quit. And now I think once you shift and didn't find passion, it's more like you needed a new purpose. And I believe you are an excellent boxing coach and mentor. And seeing these kids in here, the way that you help, a lot of kids that have come from tough upbringing have real purpose to where they're not out there doing gangbanger shit and they're in here no, doing absolutely. positive shit. I had a kid come in here and, uh, and he, he, didn't, he just kind of said something, you know, these kids are tough kids and you know they're not gonna sit here and cry in an interview and tell you all the problems they have but he just kind of said you know you pick up things just in inference you know he kind of said he goes man he goes uh i haven't been in trouble since i met you he said and then we were just kind of talking his, his mother went to prison for stabbing and killing somebody brother got charged with murder and he was you know in sixth seventh grade always in trouble and here he is in ninth grade doesn't drink doesn't doesn't even eat meat anymore yeah so watch them move and he cares about his diet wins fights and He's just all in. He's gonna be a successful guy. Yeah, I, 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 I promise you. I've seen that guy. I, I really don't want to take punches from that yeah. little, little yeah. guy. Fifteen-year-old kid, man. But yeah. He's, uh, and there was another one in here that was talking about how he had, you know, he had house arrest still on, and yeah. he got stabbed a couple of times. Yeah. And he almost got killed. Yeah, got, got had to get life flighted in a helicopter. Holy shit! Yeah. But he also was talking about how he, you're a positive role model for him. How boxing is helping his life move forward. I haven't contributed to the boxing club, but I want to give you some money. Um, cause I, and if any contractors want to contribute to boxing's deal, the, the, these kids, they really are great kids. Um, but the, one of the things I wanted to share with you, my audience, is, is for contractors, I was on this journey 75 hard. Billy doesn't drink. And, you know, what, what, how was that helpful in your life? Oh, boy. I mean, you know, I, I would never would say I was like an alcoholic or, but, you know, I always just think about, I don't play video games either. Like, mm -hmm. there's things that, the time you spend either drinking or being hungover, what if you devoted that time into anything? Let's, if you wanted to learn a different language, if you wanted to learn a sport, it, it, to me it's just a waste of time. And we're here on earth and we only have so many moments and to waste it out being somebody you're not or to waste it out, uh, you know, laying in bed hungover, um, it's just a massive waste of energy. So I, I decided to give it up. Well, for me, it's about top performance and waking up a little sluggish can also lead into uh, me blowing off at the handle for and like you said razor's edge trying to maximum squeeze the All most performance things. out of myself I took that 75 hard challenge where I'm working out twice a day I'm drinking a gallon of water I'm not drinking and I come in here because I got so many workouts to do I want to entertain myself during these workouts uh, Sean had been in here telling me you got to get in here you got to get in here and you know as soon as I get in here getting world-class coaching you know I, I love coaches and I love to basically have you know access to great coaches and so um, you know I realize now that you have an app with Kelly the guy you grew up with to teach my contractors or guys that follow me boxing and 
I wanted to share uh, with my audience the, the thing that's made a transformational difference in my life. This boxing has, has been something that has, you know, made me more ripped, has definitely helped me, you know, gain lean muscle mass. But it's the main thing is confidence. It's, it's learning something in an uncertain time. No matter who gets elected, no matter what po political view you have, you know, they're, they're boarding up windows around, dude. I mean, right. in certain serious, cities, you serious, don't know. Yeah. And so it's not just boxing these guys need to prepare with. But And that's the most important thing. You know, we get these kids and, you know, myself and, and Jeff, who run, runs a nonprofit with me, you know, you realize you can see a kid and you realize he, he might not be a world champion. And we might have 40 kids in here and, you know, maybe one, maybe two can make it to the professional level and maybe one from there can take it all the way. But it's, it's not even about that. It's about you learn so much about yourself and you learn to believe in yourself. You know, I love the sport of boxing because you, you get in the ring, there's no timeout. You know, you, you can't call timeout, put the next player in, you know, t lay on the floor until the ref save you. If you're in the ring, you could win every second of the fight. If you get tired and you go down, the fight's over, you lost. So I always tell the kids there in the ring, they start looking at me, don't look at me. You, you figure it out. You know, if, if you take a knee, you're, you're done. But if not, you, you grab, you hold, you move around, you figure out how to survive. And that's how we do all the workouts. It's always three minutes of work. So you, once, you, once you overcome yourself and you, learn, and you learn to take it to the next, I'm not going to die, I'm going to be okay. And you learn to believe in yourself, then you're outside the boxing ring. Something happens in life. There's some, some tragedy happens or, or something, some girl breaks your heart or something you really wanted to didn't work out, you, you, you know you're going to be okay because you believe in yourself because you did it in the ring. The, there right. must be something in the water from Youngstown because y'all became power punchers, very, very successful. And this workout that you put us through, um, it's 15-minute, three-minute rounds. There's a rhyme and a reason behind every station. Every single day we end with hitting mitts. But, you know, these guys could execute this workout from home. What would they need to do to execute this at home? Well, to do it at home, I tell you, all you would really need, you know, if you have a heavy bag at home, that's great, but you don't even need it. You know, you can shadow box, maybe two-pound hand weights. I think with two-pound hand weights, that's kind of was the one thing we, we um, suggested everybody get for the app, mm -hmm. was if they didn't have a heavy bag, go ahead and grab two-pound hand weights. And every day you can do it from the house. You don't need more than, you know, five or ten feet. And um, you know, you're going to feel good about yourself when you're done. So one of the things is, you know, I'm here, I'm trying to help Billy uh, expand his gym, get his app out there and start doing some Zoom classes. So I'll trade some marketing coaching, he'll be giving me boxing coaching and, you know, both ways there's growth. So this exercise of getting you access to the app and putting together a blue collar entrepreneur fight club is an exercise of camaraderie because I want my contractors to have what you had the Fort Myers kids come down here. There, there was a group of two rival boxing clubs in here Saturday Absolutely. and uh, different weights, different sizes, different ages, different amount of fights. Everybody got matched up and then they went to war. Yeah. And there, I mean, there, was, no, there was no quitting. There was no quitting. Nobody quit either. Yeah, there's a lot of mutual respect, but I mean, you know, we, we let our guys fight because that's, that's the way you learn. I mean, at the end of the day, and that's anything I think in, in, we're, uh, in the business world, it's important too. You could do all the prep work, read all the books, do all the, but if you don't take that step and take that. Well, I think there's day, a lot of quitters and that's the, re right. the reality is uh, I've seen in my coaching programs that every single person who sticks with it has success. They double, triple, quadruple, they hit their goals, but it's all the quitters. It's the people right. that are, are listening to their bitch voice and it's not, you know, whatever reason, whatever it happens, you know, you're, you're justifying it because, you know, if your life depended on it and it held a gun to your head, you could probably you could do it. You'd you could figure it out. <laughs> just, just like today, I was trying to hold my legs up and it was not going very good. Uh, anyways, my point is, you know, putting myself through these workouts, it's a mental conditioning and, you know, also putting myself through learning even how to spar and just getting started. I wanted to take a fight so that I would have my best physical condition so that I would have my most focus in the boxing workout and so that what I'm learning here in boxing gets applied so that I can maximize my potential. Now, look, there's plenty of people that will knock my ass out out there. I understand completely. But if I can squeeze just a little bit more stamina, a little bit more confidence and a little bit more energy out of my life, plus bring camaraderie to the contracting world, put some people in a seat that would love to be entertained. Now, a lot of people want to beat me up. 
There's a lot of, there's a lot of influencers out there that got a lot to say, but I'm going to have a live contractor fight. Billy's going to be speaking at my live event and we're going to be doing zoom classes to get you prepared to join us now that means that you can learn to box you can gain stamina gain confidence and learn this youngstown special sauce that kelly and billy have used to make millions of dollars in boxing more importantly you know we can see if you are from the generation of snowflakes or not because i want to make sure that people understand when you have the uh quitter inside of you, you will never get what you want in life. And things that are worth having are worth fighting for. They're worth going through pain for. And I think that people's tolerance for uncertainty, like, am I going to get knocked out? Am I going to have enough stamina to make it in the round? People's tolerance for, hey, if I quit my job as a teacher, is my gym going to be successful? Am I going to fall all flat on my face? And your journey as an entrepreneur, now uh, it, it, it really depends on how you can expand this gift you have to be a boxing coach because if you're only going to if you're only going to help a small number of people you're 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 going to get to the same point in your coaching career that you did in your boxing right. career where you feel like I, I'm just doing this for the money. Yeah. And you know, I, if if you're making this big a difference in these kids life, then this needs to be across the whole United States globe and you know, I know that contractors out there if they will uh Go to the Zoom classes, download the app, prepare like their life depends on it, like the ultimate lie detector test, like they're going to be put in a ring in front of a, a room full of their peers and have to fight for their life. You see, to me, that's the ultimate motivator to squeeze out potential and to separate the men from the boys. And that's what we're trying to do in my elite group. Uh, Sky Diamonds Elite is a group of contractors that are, are using whatever advantage they can to grow their business. And this is just an advantage. Uh, co uh, boxing is an unfair advantage. Learning how to box, getting this confidence in the ring, and I want the people in my group to have it. Now you're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to take risks to get it. And you're going to have to pay to play. Um, cost to download the app, the Zoom class is going to have a small fee associated. You're going to have to pay to come to my event. But if you follow all those things, we'll get you a fight card. We'll let you fight in front of a thousand people. And we're going to have uh, some contractor fights on uh, March 12th. Um, man, thanks for doing this, buddy. I'm excited I look to be forward there. Thank to you so it. Much for having me hey, on. man, this is an awesome little chance for me to share. And I'm going to be you know, sharing some more insight with Billy. Y'all should follow him. Where can they follow you? You have a YouTube channel and on your YouTube channel, you got a lot of instructional free videos too. Yeah, so our YouTube channel is pretty cool. We have some, it's called the Sweet Science Boxing and Fitness. Um, our logo is right up there. Just check the logo out and um, you know, you'll find the YouTube channel. But uh, you know, there's, there's really good instructional videos. There's some videos of matches. Uh, there's some old professional fights from Kelly and myself. Um, and just some good sparring in the gym. So whatever you're looking for um, in the boxing world, the, the, the uh, YouTube channel has it covered. All right, guys, so we're gonna provide a link to the app. You can download and get the app. We're gonna provide a link to the Zoom classes, this Blue Collar Entrepreneur Fight Club. And reach out to me if you wanna be a part of this by commenting below on this video. And this will start a conversation that could change your life. It could give you the ultimate unfair advantage. And there's no better feeling than having somebody that's trying to knock your ass out and you getting the better of them. There really is no better I'd feeling. Say that there's not.